Okay. Uh, welcome back to the Sean Trace Show. I actually have a really good friend of mine tonight that will be uh, answering some questions, and I'm going to scare the crap out of her. Now, uh, would oh, you God. like to introduce yourself tonight to our audience? Oh, wow. Um, hi. I'm Amari. I'm from Iceland, and I am an actress. Cool. Now, um, I met Sean yes. through acting yes, class. Yes, we did. <laughs> Yes, we did. And uh, we have had a couple. We did a short film together, too, that was recently yes, we in did. a festival. Oh, my God. Shut shut. <laughs> Can we start it over? This is so rewind, awkward. Rewind. Please, rewind. come on. Let's, all right, all right. No, no, no. No, no, no. Let's, let's start okay. it over. Okay. Three, <clears> two, <throat> one. Hi, my name is Sean. This is the Sean Trey Show. And I have a friend of blah, 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 and a friend with me today. Now, uh, what is your name? Would you like to introduce yourself to our audience? Hi. Well, thank you for having me. My name is Amari, and I'm from Iceland. Cool. I'm an actress and, uh, you know, do a, a lot of other stuff, but mainly here. Awesome. I am an actress. Awesome. Now, now um, so much to ask here. You're from Iceland. Uh, and um, <laughs> have you always been an actor? Did you do, I, I, I believe you danced before as well, right? Yeah. Well, I started dancing when I was three. I danced for 12 years, so that was a big part of my life. But when I was young, acting was a huge part of it, too. It was so natural and just came, I think, uh, adjacent. That's, mm -hmm. that's the word I'm looking for to add to the dance. Mm -hmm. And um, then I kind of uh, lost it a little bit around, I think, 13. Okay. Because I did, I did a movie and I got picked on pretty bad. That's not fun. Um, at school for you know wanting to do acting because I lived in a really small town. Mm. And then I was, I think I, I think I was eighteen, I eighteen nineteen something like that, and I quit um, dancing and I found acting again. Uh, thanks to my film studies teacher. That's awesome. Now, 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 what? Um, you you got into it really young. What type of acting were you doing when you when you were young? Was it theater? Was it uh, TV stuff? I was in a choir, an all girls choir, and we used to do musicals. Nice. Any 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 famous musicals? Are these Icelandic musicals? What type of musicals were you doing? Um, we did Little Mermaid. Nice. Uh, we did. Annie that was a little bit later but it, yeah there were a couple once and then you know some Icelandic once and then just like school recitals and I think we did the oh god what's it called in English the the, the nativity yeah, the, the nativity the uh, the the the, the, yeah, Bible, the, the, the Jesus the story. story you know yeah, yeah 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 we used to do that one too that's cool. um and I was uh, Angel Gabriel that's a heck of a role to play <laughs> now that was awesome also played yeah. by a woman. Uh, Gabriel was also played by a woman in the movie Constantine. Played, yeah, oh, really? by Tilda Swindon. Tilda Swindon awesome. played the Archangel. I love her. Or was it Gabriel yeah, or was she Michael? Boss. Oh, she might have been Michael. So I, I'll have to double check. But a great movie. I love Keanu Reeves. And uh, yeah, I, I, I can never get enough Keanu. I'm enjoying all of the, uh, the Matrix uh, resurrection trilogy uh, uh, there's a matrix re yeah, yeah. The, the new trailer just came I'm out i'm excited for that and i actually just recently saw the matrix for the first oh, time oh, wow what did you think it's dated now it is, well is it is it or we're actually living is in a it? simulation so we're kind of approaching that i think i just thought it was really it was a very modern concept for its time, yeah, I'd say. I think so. It was, there was something cool. There, there's something really cool. <laughs> really messed with me. And that's, I think, that's what they were trying to do. Uh, if you go on to the trailer and you click, you get to click either a red pill or a green pill. And uh, so it's, it's, 20, it's 11 16 here in Vietnam, where I'm at. It's much earlier in Iceland. Uh, but if you click on it. Yes, it, we still have daylight. It is quite, it is nighttime here because my house is peaceful at night. We have a lot of people in my house and everyone's sleeping now. But uh, it, you click on the trailer and then it's like, and they start doing this voiceover where they're talking to the audience and they're like, it's 11 6, you might think it's 11 16 p.m., but really, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> they know what time it is so i guess the 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 trailer is moderately interactive it will read whatever time it is where you're at 
Oh yeah. You, as soon as we're done, you're going to go check it out. I know you are. Yeah. And so, I I'm am. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that stuff. Oh, what a uh, black mirror. They did an interactive film. I didn't know that. I think in 2019. I didn't know that. That's pretty. 2019, 2020. I'll have to check it out. That one was really cool. You can choose the story and it gives you a different ending. And I watched it like five times trying to get a you know different story. Every my, time. my most recent experience to choose your ending of a story was actually with um, Puss in Boots on Netflix for my daughter. We were like, Puss in Boots? It's totally interactive. You can pick the ending too. So I was like, yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's reference, frame of reference there. But I also have a five-year-old daughter. So what can you do? Well, that's really interesting. And, and you know... It, I've been, I talked to one of my guests about how uh, theater is really something that a lot of actors start in and, and musicals as well, because it's something that a lot of schools actually have for kids. Now, now um, what was it like for you yeah. to take part in these musicals? Was it fun? Did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it as a kid, but I think I didn't really think about it. I think it was just, it was just something you did. You were in musicals, you sang, you did, you know, you, you acted, you, you put on a show. I, I didn't really question it at the time. And then I think when I got a bit older, I remember my, my dance teacher who was um, casting for Annie, she wanted me to go for the, for the main role. And I was like, I was traumatized. This was <laughs> right after I'd done the film and everybody was like making fun of me. Cause I wanted, I was like being all serious mm. and like, you know, acting and stuff. And I was like, Oh my God, I can't do it. I don't want to like, uh, no. Um, so I ended up just playing an orphan and I had a grand time and you know, <laughs> But I was still, I still had a fun, like I still had fun. And I talked um, to my friends about this. So, so if you go to LA, you know, you're lucky that you started, in, you're, in, you're an actor in Iceland because LA is this really moderately toxic acting environment because everyone moves there and everyone's like trying and there's this major level of competition and there's this hierarchy of roles. Like, you know, you're a background, you're this role, you're a day player, you're, you know, a series regular. And, and like, you know, even when I was on set, people were like, oh, you know, this group doesn't hang out with this group. Every single role that you get to do is important because it's experience. It's fun. Yeah. And it's just, you know, who cares? Like labels or, you know, you are simply an orphan, you know, but yeah, it's awesome. You know, it's fun. No, I think, you know, like me, I like I've taken so many acting classes and the the most profound learning for me is always on set or on stage. hundred percent. Like I learned I learned so much more than I could ever learn, you know, in a in a controlled setting. I think it's the I think it's the maybe the the anxiety, the the immediacy, like this is the moment right now and yeah. you just kinda gotta I think you gotta go. There's two types of learning that's going on. Like acting classes are good for theory to give you, you know, kind of a foundation. But like at the end of the day, you got to get into a job and practice because, yeah. you know, you, you can only do so much in a classroom. After that, there's a point where you just have to be doing it. Whether And that's exactly. anything, you know, that's anything. It's like I'm a martial artist and, you know, you can practice. Which I think is so cool, by the way. Thank you. I when you told that. me, I was like. Wow. I used to be able to kick ass before I had a child and got old, but you know, I still train hard. It's just things hurt longer after you train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's a, yeah, yeah. God, if I, I was starting to do judo throws, you know, though, the most injured I've ever gotten in my life wasn't from martial arts. The most injured I ever got water slide herniated disc. And wow. Yeah. No fun. And then he went by, never flared up, calmed down. I was able to do everything, do judo ju again, do jujitsu, do Muay Thai, nothing, nothing flared up that disc. Disc was totally fine until I took my daughter to a trampoline and daddy was trying to show her how to dunk with the basketball in the super high hoop. And I was like, Aah! and it was just like in those movies where you see the old guy is like, Oh, oh no. just <laughs> my doctor, oh, God. my doctor was like, yeah. And I was like, Oh dude, hasn't heard like this since the water slide. He's like, yeah, you haven't been doing much, you know, activities that really compress the spine except for trampolines. Yeah. And I was like, no. Yeah. And it's been uh, no fun since then. But, um, yeah, I'm not a fan of trampolines anymore, <laughs> but 
That's too bad. It's all good. It's part of part of life. Is you you. But I prefer to have jumped on the trampoline and have a hurt back than to never try trampoline on a trampoline. You know, it's like that. Give yourself a permission to try. Yeah, and your daughter, do- your daughter will remember this. She'll remember me in spasms on the floor. <laughs> yeah, oh. but at least, at least, Daddy tried. At least, Daddy you know, tried. he went, he went for it. <laughs> Daddy went for. It. Oh man, I'm going to be one of those dads. But yeah, if that's what it is, it's what it is. That's the best, right? No, no. You know, they show you, they teach you to have no fear. Exactly, and that's and that, that's that's something. We were we had a conversation a little bit about this. Um, before we started the, you know, the importance of, of, of teaching kids, you know, new ways to see things. Now, yeah. now how about your parents? What, what, you know, did your parents teach you that helped you in your career and in your life? What are some of the things that you think they passed on to you? Wow. That's a loaded question. I think my mom, I grew up mostly with my mom. Okay. Um, And I think she taught me just to never give up. Don't surrender because there's, you know, it's not over till you're dead. I love that. So, so there's, there's always something more to do. And I remember when I would come home and I'd like, I'd be at school and I, I maybe didn't do my best, Mm. you know, on a test she would always tell me you did the best you could at that moment. Hmm. And I think like, you know, competing or like not competing, but like, you know, only thinking about yourself and wanting to get better than what you did last time. I think that's a really healthy thing that she taught me to not be in competition with anyone else. You, you bring up a really interesting point. So I remember one audition that I went on in LA and I walked into this room and it was a really surreal experience. I love that auditions have all gone online now because to me, I love it because it reduces the competition. Like, but at this time, you know, it used to be, you'd go, especially in LA, you'd go to this room and it was the creepiest part is I would go in and there's a room of like 20 other guys who look just like me because Right. They, yeah. they were casting for a look. And I was like, God, and a lot of them are better looking than me. And I was just like feeling really uncomfortable. Oh, that's what I'm like in a different universe where I look more handsome or, or something else. Yeah. You know? and more experienced, more experience, done something else, yeah. you so, know, taller. We're, we're waiting and we're, I'm, I'm, I'm in line and there's the guy goes in front of me and there's a really messed up situation because they left the door open. So you can see the person going ahead of you. And this guy kills it like hands down funniest guy I've ever seen. It was like this handsome, funnier version of me. And I was like, (sighs) and I walked in the room and he walks out. He's like, good luck, buddy. And I was like, no, you don't have to be nice to me. That makes it harder. Be an asshole. That's so (laughs) condescending as well. Like (laughs) you will do better than that. You know, I'm like, no, I dare you. (laughs) Don't be nice. Oh God. And I walked in and they're like, are you ready? And I was like, and I looked at them and I was like, are you guys serious? I'm going to get, I'm going to save your time. Cast that guy. He's awesome. I can't compete with that. Like, really? Like, I don't even want to go right now. And they started laughing and, and they started started like just cracking up and, you know, and they said, well, give it a shot for your own, your own sake. And like, and I finished and they were like, you know what? You're right. He was better than you. <laughs> but th- what, it was interesting because... That's not soul crushing at all. <laughs> one of the guys reached out. He's like, you know what? For what we're looking for, you know, that guy was a better match. You know, maybe we'll find someone even better than him. But you're yeah. really interesting. Here's my card. We'd love to chat with you sometime. And so I got a connection with someone there. And um, I don't even know if anything happened from that. But what I loved about that was I could have tried to be in competition. I could have tried to compete with that guy. Yeah. But when you get into competition, it's a losing game because you don't get to be you. Yeah. So what's special about you? About me? Um, I mean, I guess there's just me. 
there's no other version of me. So, you know, I can only bring what I can bring. I like that. And when you talk about, when you talk about like being in competition, I never really got that because all of my experiences of, of theater and, and film, it's a teamwork from yeah. the start to finish. Yes. You are just a part of a team and you gotta, you gotta do your role. <laughs> and even if you're the one in front of a camera, there are 20 people looking at you that have spent years developing the script that have you know spent uh, hours setting up the lighting and you're just you're just a part of the team and i yep. think just you know working well with people the yeah. people that you're you're working with and you know giving them something good to to work with i uh, think i think that's my what i focus on rather than agree. like oh is she better than me or like <laughs> Does she, you know, bring something? Does she outshine me in this performance? I think, oh God, who was it? I think it was in um, Chekhov, hmm. the Chekhov technique. Yeah. I was in an acting class and my acting teacher, she said, a good actor is one that makes your co-star look better. Nice. And I took that with me. I was like, you know what? Yeah, like that's that's the person that I would want to work with somebody that helps you shine that helps you deliver you know your lines because acting is hard yeah. <laughs> and stressful and it takes a lot out of you and just to have a good partner that's empathetic and you know a brilliant performer and then to you know have that collaboration I think is really awesome there was a I took a class from a really great teacher David Brunetti I'm gonna plug David because David's one of the most amazing people I know and um, I'm gonna pop up a link to his stuff up over here because he's a great teacher and he awesome. teach um, he teaches uh, musical theater so he focuses more on singing and uh, one of the things that he says in his class that I really love is that when you're singing in your 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 role your character um what you need to remember is that you are not the most important character in the scene your goal of your song of your singing is to bring attention to the other person who you have to perceive as the protagonist of the movie or of the scene that you really, even if it's a, an extra, you have to bring attention to them because by bringing attention to them, you highlight something special about them and, and you make them shine and that reciproc you know, in a reciprocal way makes your character shine because there's compa there's, there's a hello kitty cat. There is a, you know, something, all the kitty cats. Nice. So, um, diving back in, uh, we recently worked on a short film together that I loved. I loved. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Volcano man. Volcano man. Shout out to yours. Yeah. I, I, he, uh, it just was recently at the film festival in uh, in Denmark. Sadly, did he go? He did. He did. He did. He was, yeah, he was nominated, nominated for best actor. Sadly, he was not the winner, but nomination is pretty awesome too. So, hey, that's, you know, it's the nomination is what counts. But what was it? awesome about that is like, it goes back to what you were talking about is like, here we've got people in Iceland people i'm in vietnam i get to play your your really horrible psychologist who pulls out a puppet mid-scene and uh i love yeah. that i think you were just adding to the family trauma oh, rather than um, not helping in any way shape or form no but it's so collaborative <laughs> like here you guys you guys like i i so i i recorded my stuff i just on my phone and you know just i, I kind yeah. of freestyled you know, uh, you all got me a, a kind of a base script and kind of just went with it. And then you guys freestyled above and beyond that. Oh yeah. No, that entire scene is me freestyling. So hilarious, man. And so for anyone who hasn't watched, uh, please watch Volcano Man. It's hilarious. I don't know where they can find it, it's but really... we'll find it. We'll talk to you. Oh, all. I'll see if I can find One it. of my jokes actually yeah. made it into the, the final cut of the film where, um, the, the the guard is running after um Yoel's character and he's like he's like no this is castration valley and then Yoel goes no thank you i like my balls yeah right 
Yeah. That was your joke? That was, that was hilarious. That was me. I was yelling that on set. That's awesome. Or like on set near the volcano where we hiked for Which like three hours awesome. to you get the shot. hiked up to a freaking active volcano to shoot. Yeah. And it was like a three hour. People, there, was a, there were people yelling at us, like telling us to shut up. And we were just like. We're making movies, man. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. But I mean, I love how it was like, one of the things that I loved about that is that comedy is not, we've been in a really tough situation here in Vietnam right now. We're dealing with a major lockdown and Delta is just yeah. really bad. And it's a also, tough situation. not many, um, the vaccination shipments coming, coming in for you. Luckily, it's been coming. My wife Thank and God. myself uh, have gotten vaccinated. Um, and, and you know, awesome. luckily, a lot of people I know now are, are vaccinated. And the city, they're, they're, they're doing a great job getting it in, you know, the best they can. It's just, awesome. you know, it's worldwide. Supply is tricky, man. It's it's a big moving thing that there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Yeah. But, you know, it's been heavy. It is. That's it. And so, like, even the last week, you know, we're just at this point of like, what do we do, man? And so we watched Deadpool last night, Deadpool 2 tonight, and just cracking up. And even in the midst of, of heaviness, you can find that laughter, you know? But comedy allows us to rise above, you know, and, and I think that that's something that the world sorely needs is some yeah. levity. I think just art in general. Tell me. I've been turning to music a lot. What music are you listening to right now? Oh, God. Um, I got into this. Oh, God. What's this? What's that? What is he called? You mind if I check? Not a problem. Please reference the uh, are you a Spotify person or an Apple music? I am. Spotify person. As am I. Indeed. Spotify, you can please send us the check after this episode. <laughs> the, well, I know you Americans don't pronounce the H in Anything Herb. Anything correctly. Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass. Oh, to Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass is solid jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I I've been awesome. really into it because it's like, um, I have a friend who loves jazz and he, he said... I love jazz because I can't follow it, and mm. that makes me calm. I was listening rather to than like listening Amy Winehouse tonight on vinyl. Amy Winehouse, yeah, mm. she's awesome. Yeah, but a little bit of a downer. But you know, sometimes sometimes it feels good. And today I'm rock, I just uh, new kids on the block T-shirt to rock tonight. Rocking out my uh, my awesome. uh, really horrible thrift store find, but awesome store fine you, i found this vest at the thrift store lately uh, right. i think it was i think it was two days ago it's coming winter is coming son and you're in iceland it's, it's it's cold it's cold yeah yeah this is not going to be enough i have to wear like a down parka and oh, everything yeah, man, you gotta like you guys have to wear the thing so that you only have like this much showing right yeah well you know i'm in the city so it's a little it's a little easier here, but it still gets really where, fucking cold. Where Yoel lives. Like, he, he sent me a, a, a photo. He's, He's like, out in the countryside, yeah. yeah. He sent me a photo. He's like, these are the northern lights. I was like, Christ. Oh my God. Backyard northern lights. I was like, oh, in Vietnam, it was 35 today. Degrees? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's, it's hot here, always, year-round. Oh, my God. In the hottest time of humid year. Humid, too. Humid. But in the, we get some dry season. The dry season. It's in the middle of rainy season right now. It's been cooler because we've got a big tropical storm coming in. Right. But, yeah, music music lifts you up, you know? Yeah. Uh, we. What are your go-to songs when you're down? Oh, I listen to, when I'm down, I like to just sit down and process stuff. So I listen to a lot of, like, frequency music and like singing bowls nice. and like nice. and like uh angel sounds on youtube i i um we, um we have the uh what was it the uh the hang drums yeah 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 all that stuff i i get really into it it's really relaxing because you kind of it so, keeps the same tone throughout the entire thing so you can kind of like get your breathing into it i find joy in sharing information. I really do. 
and helping people. But there are moments. You helped me a lot. I, I remember that. when I first met you in acting class, um, we got into our first practice on Skype, I believe. Yeah. And you didn't even say, hi, how are you? I'm Sean. Like all the, all the little things you just went right into it. And then I believe we talked for like two hours afterwards. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I thought it was so refreshing. I don't know. I, I really enjoyed working with you. And then, and then I've been a when teacher I did the, for the audition that I did. Yeah. Which was an awesome audition. Awesome audition. But I think you kind of helped me reach a, uh, kind of an epiphany How, in, what was that you know and self-taping i think it was just like having a a method to the to the madness if you will because you're always trying to cram so much into because you get like two days oh yeah and you gotta so you know get your character for, for learn non, your lines non-film people a self-tape is the standard way that you book a role and self-taping yeah. is generally it's rushed how, how, what what's your normal turnaround on a self-tape Two, three days. Yeah, so you get you get a scene that's been emailed to you. And like it's not always like a cohesive scene. It's like no. just lines and then like they jump to the next section so they can show you doing like different versions of the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you're like, oh. And you get two days. Some Sometimes they do send you the script with it. I really... I really appreciate I that because then I can like, I can sit at work and like in my breaks, I can read through it and mm -hmm. like kind of figure out where I am and what I'm doing. But, um, you, the initial method helped me tremendously in learning my lines. Cause I, I now can read it once through, do the initial method and I'm done. Yeah. It's I have my friend read with me and he's just like, how can you, how have you learned it so, so fast? So for and people who like, don't know this method, I don't know. Uh, you write the first letter of each word in your scene. So if you're saying, how are you doing? It would be H A Y D. And then yeah. it, you have to include the punctuation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Question mark. Question dot, mark. Everything. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it, it, it doesn't work as well. Cause you don't know what type of sentence it is, but it works wonders. I, it works. I'm horrible it's, at lines. It just, it sticks. And that saves me. Even with that, though, it takes me more than two days. I'm like, oh. But the other way, the, the step beyond that, I did some more research, is to practice. Um, so you, you, you have a paper. You can photocopy some paper with just the words on it, and then you write them out. And so practicing the writing actually helps you also. Uh, yeah. It gives you this. I don't know. I forget there's a scientific rationale for it, but it allows you to process it in a physical way, and you can remember. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's why they make you write in school. Yeah, exactly. To make make you remember. But yeah, I like this is this helped me so much cuz it gave me more time to figure out the character and then I'm just like I'll be driving to work and I'll be like saying my lines and mm -hmm. I'll you know, I'll be at the bathroom just like reciting a little bit of the of the text and then, you know, I do all the steps that I go through and um yeah, it's it's given me a lot more confidence because I used to be a nervous wreck yeah, right? <laughs> doing auditions. Yeah, I still am. I'm not going to pretend that I'm not because, you know, it's nerve wracking. It's nerve wracking. And um, yeah, but this it helps. And, you know, if it helps someone else, exactly. that's awesome. And that's something that you gave me. So I'll be forever grateful. You know, and I, I, that's what I love. I love passing information around. And that's one of the reasons I started this podcast is, you know, honest to God, I feel like I would have been more successful if people had have given me information earlier in my career to just help the steps along the way. And I feel like yeah. there are at times all of us, but actually I'm not going to complain like that because that makes me sound like I'm resenting the journey I had. And I love the journey I had. It got me to where I am. But I feel like if we can share information, other people will be able to overcome some of the hurdles and obstacles they have. And maybe, maybe some of these people watching this are not even, you know, creatives, but just are dealing with stuff that they're dealing with, you know, because life is tricky. I'm yep, pretty sure that most of my videos, the only person watching them is my mother. So hi, mom, again. <laughs> hi. Yeah. Hope you're well over in the U.S. Why do you want to do this career? What do you want to get out of it? Wow. Um, Light questions today, little things. Yeah, ever just like, you know, very surface level. Nothing heavy. Easier. 
Love the series. <laughs> I think acting gave me confidence because mm. when I got back to acting, I was I had no confidence whatsoever. Really? I yeah, no, it's it's really sad actually. I was so depressed. Um I was I think halfway through my college education. And I took an acting class because I was like, you know what? I don't dance anymore. I need a creative outlet that's, you know, less physically demanding as as dancing because I had an injury. Mm. And um, I went to I went I took an acting class just at my college and I sucked. <laughs> I, got up on, <laughs> I got up on stage and I couldn't hear my own voice because my heart was beating so loud <laughs> in my ears and I remember I was so mad I was so angry I was like why why is this so hard for me when it used to come so easy and I think I think it just it took me on a journey of you know having to radically accept myself um it took me on a journey to really you know intro go into introspection about who i am what i want where i came from mm -hmm. and what i want to say and i think that's still i'm still pretty young it's it's a process but i always just remember because i grew up pretty lonely mm. I, ha I always had these intense bouts of loneliness and just like you know being in your own head a lot and i remember that movies and these people on the screen they taught me so much and they were there for you when you know nobody else was mm -hmm. and they could be a friend in a in a certain way and i always just remember you know i wanted to be that for people right i wanted to just you know teach them something maybe give them a different perspective make them laugh um show them that you know life is not always just a constant bout of one emotion you will go through all of them and um it's a journey mother Teresa, i remember this story i can't remember where i read it but it, it's a true story mother Teresa was meeting with a bunch of like bollywood actors and they they were all like you know here you are like treating people with leprosy and really helping and we're like you know doing movies and stuff and we feel really superficial and you know and she was like she made this interesting point she's like you know uh, not speaking to different people's individual characters but she's like your job is equally important because you get people people need to feel like they're not alone People need yeah. to be able to identify with someone else's experience, you know? And, and this is one of the things we were talking before. Um, and I, I, I had looked at when I started this show, like what happens when people have a political opinion, this or that, that's different than mine. And one of the things that I looked at is I don't have all the answers. I have opinions. And I think plenty of my opinions are right. I might not be. But if we cannot create a dialogue, if we cannot create a conversation, if we cannot start talking about stuff, we can't fix anything because yep. we have to talk about it. How do you think film can be used as a tool to enlighten people? Um, I think all movies are important because, you know, when you watch a movie, especially if you watch it with someone like Imagine you go into the cinema with your friend and you walk out. There's always something to say, mm -hmm. you, you know, if it was good, if it good was bad, bad. Yeah. if it was uh, something profound, if it, it was just, you know, missed the mark totally. And then maybe even if it missed the mark, you can kind of start talking about the things that, you know, hit the mark. And it can be so simple. Like I went to the movie um, Shang-Chi and the, the, what's it called? The, the Legend rings. of the Ten yeah. Rings. The other day, and me and my friend, we came out like doing like karate moves and like kung fu, and we were just like, "Oh my god, this movie made us feel like you know." Imagine if you were a ten-year-old and you would go to that movie, you would go home and you would play pretend karate, yeah. you know, for weeks afterwards because it really, you know, sparked something in the imagination. And yeah. I, I think just I think any movie has the possibility to have an impact on anyone. Yeah. 
I think it's just the matter of where you are in your life. What, what? And even that me, like I'm in my twenties and I went to a movie and I came out a child. Right. And that exactly. was just, that was just joyous and fun. And you know, sometimes it's really heavy. I'm not like when I watched sure. Arrival, I, I laid in my bed and right? I cried for like <sighs> an hour. Yeah. Not even not, like, I, I'm not even kidding. I was just like, you know, oh my God. processing everything and like, thinking about my life up until this point and how it's going to be it was like do you know what crazy. movie gets me every time <laughs> what interstellar oh yeah because the dad goes and then he's he you know he communicates to his daughter and like i just think about my kid and i'm just like oh it gets me every time man it, yeah it's it's tough but what are Let's pick three movies, or even two, or one, two. What are some of the most profound movies that have influenced your your consciousness, your wokeness? Wow. My wokeness? Wokeness. Oh, I can, my God. I can be hip. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. Of course you can. It's all about empathy. Um, wow. My wokeness. I think the first movie is kind of funny. I think the first movie that really had an impact on me was Lilo and Stitch, Dude, the cartoon. Nice. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I think her loneliness in that movie. I think it kind of hit a place that you know kind of resonated with a, a six-year-old me, mm. and that made me go like. You have to be nice. Mm. You have to be nice to people. You have to. And that was a very like simple thought that and I, I used to watch that movie over and over. I'd right. like rewind it on VHS <laughs> and over and over. I'd learn the dance and everything. And Hello. yeah. Hello. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I think it just I think it started me on a journey to always want to put my best foot forward always want to be there for you know people That's especially nice. the people close to me yeah and um just treat like because when you're in school there's so many different people from so many different backgrounds right and you just you all have to be there together and somehow coexist and i think kindness has a lot to do with that even if you don't completely understand each other even if you won't be together you know side by side later in life, I think, you know, meeting people that are different from you and that kind of challenge the way that you think, I think it's important. And to be able to show kindness to those people when, you know, it doesn't resonate with you. Yeah. Now a question for you, if you could go back in time and give young, young you some type of advice, what, what advice would you give a younger version of you? Oh God. Stop caring what other people think. Don't care or do care. Don't. Mm. Just do what you want to do. Do what you like. Stop, you know, there's so many things to do and all of them are equally as cool and important. I like that. If you want to dance, dance. If you want to do acting, act. If you want to go to college, go to college. Whatever you want to do, no matter what other people tell you, I think, I think kids in small towns, especially because yeah. there's such a pressure to conform and play it safe and to, and to play yeah. it safe. And I like, I think, you know, what if 12 year old me who was, you know, made fun of for being in a movie, if I hadn't cared if I hadn't cared about, you know, fitting in or like wanting to pe wanting people to like me and, you know, what if I hadn't cared and just like continued and then I wouldn't have to start again at 18. Right. Not that I, you know, would have it any other way because that but. acting helped me process a shit ton of trauma. Yeah. And, you know, I had to take that break. I had to kind of, you know, get into it that way. But I don't know. I wonder what I would have gone on to do. Yeah. That's my, that's, that's what I'm thinking too. 
No, yeah. no. Let's... So kids in small towns, if any of you ever watch this. Don't listen to the bullshit. <laughs> don't give it. No, like, because now when I'm out of school and everybody is like scattered, nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. And the time that you spend cultivating the things that bring you joy and the things that you like and find interesting, it's going to be so much more valuable than what Becky in eighth grade thought of your dress or the fact that you were in a movie. Becky needs to just go and jump into a river. Becky needs to just, you know, Becky's going to end up wherever the fuck she wants to end up. And you're going to go wherever you, you're going to go. Becky. We, we shouldn't demonize Becky's. Becky's are probably nice people, but you know. Becky. Is that better? <laughs> you know, also you, Becky, go ahead. Do what you want to do. It, you know, right? stop thinking of what other, other people right? are doing. Just, Becky. just center, center yourself. Exactly. Because <laughs> Becky probably has some trauma of her own that's causing her to judge. Of course she does. You know? Of course she does. Exactly. And I, I think that's what that's what I had as well. Like for me, I wish that someone had of just told me not to care and, yeah. or care about what's important. Maybe care about, care about you yeah. care about what you think, not about what other people. I think. remember like I was seeing this one therapist and I think back about what this guy told me. And I was just like, what? I, um, I, I was working with therapy and I was like, you know what? I want to be, a musician and an actor and he's like you know you'll always have that opportunity but you should probably get a safe career you know maybe go into medicine or something and it really influenced me and i followed it i started studying to be a doctor and i hated it i liked the information i liked but the idea of being stuck in a doctor's office i got to i it was i i i it was eastern medicine so i, I studied acupuncture and, and neurology which was at least a compromise something that was more interesting to me but i That's got really to like, cool, the fourth year of school and finally i was like what am i doing i don't want to work in an office putting needles in people all day you know love the information but not not what i wanted to do and finally i i quit and i moved up to la to become an actor and uh, that was that was what happened. So I think that we are told too often to play it safe and to care what people think. Now, let's yeah. imagine this is a question I've been asking everyone. I have the genie's lamp and you rub it. Phew, genie pops out. You got a wish. Aladdin, by the way, one of my favorite movies of Great. all time. A new version or old version? Old version. Robin yeah. Williams, right? I... Jasmine, not hate, no. sassy, doesn't take no shit. Right. I like my mom is, um, I have Palestinian heritage yes. um, on my mom's side and you know, she had a funny name and everybody, you know, will kind of like comment on it and all this, that stuff. And then I was, I would watch Aladdin and I was like, Oh, so this is what, you know, that's where it comes from. Like, this is the culture. This is, this is some, kind of representation from that side and i was <laughs> like just like kind I'm of... really... it's i mean it kind of combines a lot of cultures yeah i, I think, I think. It, it does there's a definite mixing but i mean it's but, it's disney but, but you know you know it's still it, my daughter has the same thing when she watches like even with though they did a better job with raya when she my daughter is half vietnamese and half american and so she watches some of those and she'll be like they look like me and it's like Yes. And that's awesome. You know, yeah, but at this, it is. And so important. It's so important because, you know, it's like she likes to dress like the Elsa dress, but she's like, daddy, I don't have blonde hair. And I said, and that's not a problem. You can look however you want. You can be, you know, you can be you, Elsa. You can be you. Yeah. You can be Asian Elsa. Exactly. You can be Arab Elsa. You exactly. can be Elsa. Elsa doesn't need to be a Scandinavian blonde woman. Right. And, and She's just a figure. Exactly. It just represents. Just enjoy the music. Have fun. But so Aladdin, yeah. you got the the lamp. Let's just circle back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 What yeah, are you yeah, gonna okay. wish for? You got the lamp. What am I gonna and wish for? Let's, let's, let's put. It. Of course, we would all understand there's gonna be worst wish for world peace and things like that. But let's imagine something that revolves around something that affects you, something personal. Either do you. I get do I get three wishes? Sure. If you want three. It's, it's the magic lamp, isn't it? It is. Okay. Um, 
I think number one, maybe this is kind of superficial, but I'd wish for more money because oh, yeah. I'd love to be able to buy my <laughs> mom too. a house and, you know, have my sisters be taken care of and, you know, have them, you know, have the possibility to go to whatever college education, whatever they want to do. Yeah. I think the safety of, of money would be pretty, pretty cool. I agree. Yeah, whoever, um, um, let's, get, let's, let's be real. Whoever says money can't buy happiness has never been broke. And yeah. like, sure, money itself can't buy happiness, but it can sure help create stability and stability can yeah. help create happiness. Let's be real. Yeah. So No, like people say that money can't buy happiness. It absolutely can. In this day and age, it buys yep. you a roof over your head. It buys you food in your stomach. Yep. It buys you clothes, everything, you know. You know how much it sucks to be in an upper middle class school and not be able to afford the sneakers that everybody else is wearing? Mm. It's something you got to process. It's just, yeah. you know, added, you know, they, they add to the trauma, this system that we kind of are yep. born into. And money is a really big part of that. Yep. And my mom, you know, we don't have a house. I'd love to be able to buy her a house if I ever, when, let's manifest this, when I make money from acting. I like it. I will buy her a house. I'm with you. And I will bring you back on my show and we will do the, um, you know, like the, oh my God, it's the house. I'd love that. Uh, we do like a reveal. The and reveal. Like, this is, yeah. I, mean, I kind of, I kind of want to make it dramatic, like blindfold her and you give her the to. keys and not tell her what it's for you and all to. this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. No, absolutely. I like it. Okay, right. number two. Sec second wish. Mm, I think I'd wish for. <laughs> this is kind of lame, but inner peace. I dig that. <laughs> I'd love to just feel stable, but I guess the, you know, roller coaster is what kind of makes, makes it interesting. But yeah, cause I, I've struggled with depression quite a lot. Yeah. So when I'm like down in the lowest of lows, I've always kind of, you know, looked at people that seem so mentally healthy. And I've always wondered like, what is it like to just have a steady flow of serotonin? <laughs> I feel like it sounds yeah. funny, but I get it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wish number um, three. I'd wish for a truly equal society between men and women. I dig that. Yeah. We had this conversation as well that before, before we started the call and, um, Yeah. I'm all for balancing things out. And I, I really see that more now after having a daughter, it was a yep. eye opening experience to me. And I think, I don't know. I'm so terrified. I have my sister's 13 and she's going into the, you know, she just got Snapchat and I'm just like hyperventilating, like yeah. trying to tell her, you know, to block fuck boys that ask her for nudes and, you know, all these stuff. Did you ever read The Catcher you know, in the Rye? I didn't know. You got to you gotta read that. The, the book is about that. There's uh, the story of uh, the, the, lead, the main, main character is Holden Caulfield. And it's this kid who's processing his feelings of the world being a big, scary place. And, you know... It, and he tells this story about how his sister was riding the merry-go-round and the old merry-go-rounds, they used to try to reach for the gold ring. And so there'd be this thing you try to reach over and pull out, everyone would pull out different rings. And if you got the gold ring, you were the winner. But these kids had to reach way far out and it looks like they were going to fall off. It was like super sketchy and not, not safe at all. It was like 1920s or 1940s, you know, like, let's try this kids, you know? Definitely not. Seatbelts. Yeah. What are those? <laughs> <laughs> Let them fall down. They'll be okay. Dislocated. <laughs> everything. You know, and, and, and so, but the kid was like, he's like, and, he, and then he was saying this analogy of like, he, he felt like he was this, this kid standing in the rye, in the tall rye grass. And there was a cliff back here. And then he asked him, what job do you want to have? 
And he says, I want to be the catcher, the catcher in the rye, the person, these, all these oh. kids are running to the edge and I want to be the person who tries to catch them. And what he realizes at the end of the book is you can't, you can't save everyone. And that's kind of no. the epiphany that he has, that you have to just be Zen in a way of just not having faith, but there's this surrender, this point of surrender. And it's tough at times. I think women should not surrender. I think we should up our standards collectively so that um, men become, or certain behavior becomes utterly unacceptable. Well, that is a good point. Like, you know, that book was very much 1940s, 1950s. And I always appreciated the idea of like letting go and letting flow. But at the same time, you're spot on. There's some things that shouldn't be surrendered. And there are some people that should be protected. It's time to Absolutely. write the, the, the rewrite. It's time to update the book. Update the book, yeah. Make a movie. We'll, we'll yeah. uh, based Burn on down the rye. Modern, modern remake. Yeah, OSHA. It's like there is a fence and railing and we have ways to protect everyone. I like it though. I mean, yeah. you know... As the father of a five-year-old daughter, I am going to, as soon as the lockdown ends, I already teach her martial arts. She's going to be studying Brazilian jiu-jitsu because I, I, yeah. I can't always save her, but I can sure as hell. No, but isn't that terrifying as, as a father and as just, you know, a person, you know, because you're male, you will never know what it's truly like to have someone physically above you. Not really. Yeah. And I think, you know, teaching men the, the respect, it's, oh, we could go down a rabbit hole if we, if we, we do, will do it you next know. time. Let's, let's plan to have, bring you back on and talk about bringing down the patriarchy. I'm all for that. Yes. I am. I'll be the poster child for bringing down the patriarchy. All right. It's cool. I, I like you it. You can look at my smile and, and, and. <laughs> be assured that I am taking none of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. And I, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have a, a wife that doesn't take any of my shit and a daughter that doesn't take any of my shit. So it's a, been a that heck of a wake be. up call. Yeah, it is. Respect women. Literally every person you came out of one. And it's so funny that, you know, you're nurtured by a woman. You're hungry. You go to a woman, you fall when you're playing, you go to mom and you, you know, get comforted. And then suddenly you grow up and you're a fucking dick. There's it's a true. disconnect there. It's that's true. just not computing. And I think men also have a huge responsibility 100%. in um, how they treat women and how the role models that they um give to their or like are for their sons and i think this is something that i hope people start making movies about i hope that we start writing this stuff should we should we make a movie let's about write that it. let's write it we've already talked about one where i play your deadbeat dad so maybe we expand this on that what about the the mafia princess like movie that too. we could I still we got could, that. We write I still, we could write it into that i think it could like a little bit of a absolutely I'm on it. Well, I want to wrap up on that note. I want to say thank you for coming on. And thank uh, you so much for having me. I hope it was this was cool. I was really nervous throughout the entire thing. I was trying to, you know, seem normal. No, it's all but good. But like, it was good. actually, I'm I'm holding a piece of labradorite and like praying to God that you know. <laughs> Don't worry. I I, I secretly <laughs> nice will to have see you, meditation as music always. on in the background, going, mm, so I can calm down. Yeah, yeah. In the ear, you're just yeah. like I'm okay. Frequencies. I'm okay. I'm okay. And, you, and then I have to edit this tomorrow. And then I would like sit there and like, and I notice sometimes I'll like try to say something when someone's saying something and it, it isn't even like a, Oh, that's nice. Uh, nice. I'll be like, well, mm, mm, oh. and I'm just like, man, oh. Hey, we gotta, let's embrace, embrace the imperfection. Be, wow. Right. Embrace the, imp let's embrace the imperfections because I think that's, uh, there's way too much of that. Um, Agreed. these days. Don't be perfect. Just be, be you. Whatever the hell happens. I appreciate that. Well, go for you. it. Go for it. Like, oh God, where is the, the there's a saying that's like, um, 20 seconds of insane bravery might bring you to something beautiful. So even if you don't think you can do it, just do it anyway. Be brave. Be stupid. Try it.
the fool, Be the fool in the tarot. Yeah, right? Go for it. Perfect that's example. how I got my like that's how I auditioned for Lana. Yeah. If you don't the, if you don't try, there's there's no chance. So try. You will you will miss one hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Michael Jordan. Exactly. <laughs> and we'll finish on that note. All right guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh...